Hey there everyone, this is Leo from TechLine, and in my last video, I was working on refurbishing a couple of Dell Optiplex PCs as well as HP Pro Desks, and I thought that I stumbled upon what I thought were a haul of graphic cards that they happen to have had available just sitting there. What I didn't expect was that these weren't just graphic cards, but actual workstation cards. Now, workstation cards are basically kind of like GPUs, but they're not meant to be used to play video games, but there's a display port on each and every single one of these cards. So I figured let's just plug these into my PC and just kind of see what would go on from there. Now, what these cards are actually meant to be used for are things like AI computing, um, CAD drawings, video editing, that sort of thing. They're not meant to just play games. Uh, even though they can, they have a significantly higher price tag because they have things like more memory or they are built specifically for those tasks. So I figured let's just plug them into my PC and just kind of see what's going on from that side. Just to kind of have some fun with it really on this video. Now going through the three workstation cards that I pulled out from here, it's going to be a trio of Quadro cards. Now the Quadro series no longer exists. This was discontinued recently over on the NVIDIA side. They replaced it with what's called NVIDIA RTX. I know the name is pretty much on the nose, but we'll get to whatever that is very shortly. Now the three Quadro cards I have here, we're going to go from what is visibly the smallest and weakest to the visibly the largest card that's over here. The first that we have here is going to be the Quadro K. 600 which has a whopping one gigabyte of DDR3 memory, 192 cores, and was released back over in March of 2013 with an MSRP of $200. Uh, the GPU core clock is running at 475 megahertz with a memory clock of 700 and it is DX12 compatible so technically it can kind of open everything that's available but with such a puny looking card like this, really it looks like the only thing it's meant to do is just give you a display and not actually do much of anything. Second up on the line is another card that's going to be a single slot card, and it's going to be the Quadro 4000. Now we're doubling up on the memory here. I know, watch out, go into two gigabytes of video memory that is running GDDR5. And this is also going to an increased cores. Uh, from, we're going from 192 to 256, but this was released three years prior over in March of 2010. Uh, now this card was significantly more expensive, uh, running at an MSRP at 2010 of $1,200, which in today's dollars is $1,660. Now at that cost, you can buy yourself an RTX 4090, brand new. So I would actually put this under the realm of what I would call usable, which is much better than what the Quadro K600 is going to be doing here. Now for the biggest and what is easily the most expensive card that we have here is going to be the Quadro K5000. Doubling up on the memory, once again, we have a whopping four gigs of GDDR5 memory, which we're seeing in some of the older graphic cards, like some 1650s that are running out there, running four gigabytes of memory these days. And this card came out over in August of 2012, and it's going to be running a significant increase of cores, almost five times than the previous card that we mentioned over here at 1,536 cores. Now the MSRP when this card came out was 2,000. 500 US dollars, which in today's 2023 dollars is going to be around 3,275 US dollars. And at that cost, um, pretty sure we could put it together over here. You could build yourself an entire top of the line gaming PC using some of the best parts that exist out there, uh, like a 7800X3D and an RTX 4090. To give these cards of what I would call a fighting chance, I decided to basically just pull up a bunch of games from around the area that these cards actually came out. So the five games that I picked out that were released on that year on the PC, which I happen to own as well, is going to first start off with Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, uh, Dishonored, which I'm a huge fan of that game's uh, series with Dishonored 2, as well as Deathloop that came out more recently, Borderlands 2, my favorite of the Borderlands series, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and lastly, another game that we've been playing since then, Skyrim. Yeah, that's right, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, which came out back in 2012. So we're going to run all five of these games and all three of these cards just to kind of see what they kind of perform with at that time, just to see what it is for fun. I feel so bad removing my 3070 just to put in these much older decade old cards in there. All right, out with the new and we'll go put the old in there. 
And we're going to start off with the Quadro K600, which uh, has no external power pins needed. Oh my god, it is so tiny. You know, we do have to make sure to reinstall these graphic card drivers for each and every single one of these graphic cards that we put in there. And the last update that these Quadros had was, uh, oh yeah, back in September of 2015. But it's fortunate that we're only playing games that are from around 2012. So it's not like we needed anything after this date anyway, but uh, kind of shows just how how discontinued these graphics cards are. All right, we're gonna start off the K600 on one of my favorite games ever made, Dark Souls. And uh, wow, this is running terrible. We're getting a solid <laughs> 15 frames per second here. Let me at least hit a bonfire here so I can respawn some enemies at the very least, see if I could hit anything. Oh my god, 10 with the smoke? That's not only did I have uh, what I saw was it went down to about 15 frames per second, a little bit 13, but it also kicked me out of the game because it said that your your connection was too garbage. So uh, that that answers that. Let's just go ahead and move on over to to the next game and see what we get from there. And we're just gonna take a run through White Run itself just to see what we get from there. And uh, that's interesting. 13 FPS, give or take. So that's uh, it's pretty bad. Oh my God, this input delay is. Brood, the bike game crash. Oh, it's it's artifacting. Oh my goodness, the uh, it's blinking a little bit too. That's that's pretty rough. I'm getting uh, about 15 frames per second, 17 too. This is this is running in some slow motion. All right, Borderlands 2. We're uh, running at 1080p, highest settings, and uh, hovering at 14 FPS with no combat happening whatsoever. So let's, uh, let's at least see when we, what happens if we just start shooting at things over here, because I'm afraid it's going to plummet to an unplayable rate. Going to 10 FPS? This is... This is some stuff. We got sub 10 FPS, folks. Yeah, this is... I'm not even going to try playing much more of this right now. This is clearly <laughs> unplayable kind of gameplay that we have over here. Uh, this bodes well for the rest of the cards that are on here, so uh, they can't do any worse than this, in my opinion. So let's just go ahead and uh, try it with the, uh, the last couple of games that we have in our list. Alright, for some Dishonor, we're just going to go through the uh, introduction tutorial level that explains how to cut things and kill stuff. And hey, we got ourselves 31 FPS, 32. This is an actual playable experience. Look at this. Liking what's going on. I'm not going to say it's like the best experience, we're running at 24 FPS at this point, but it's uh, it's better than what we were getting beforehand, where it was essentially just death. <laughs> like, just unplayable FPS, like, in general. So we're, we're getting ourselves, t yeah, around 35 when we're just running around, 25 right now. So let's just go into one more game, it's going to be Counter-Strike GO. I'll be surprised if anything can't run Counter-Strike GO, to be honest, so uh, we'll, we'll have to see from there. So for Counter-Strike GO, we'll just run ourselves through the benchmark, the FPS benchmark performance test map, kind of like every other benchmarker that you see out there, uh, starting off with the K600. Um, if this is under 30 FPS, I'm going to be surprised. Let's just see how that kind of works out for the game here. Man, oh man, I'm going to have to eat my words. That thing is running at 25 FPS. It is sub 30. <laughs> We're uh, running at 17 FPS average <laughs> with Counter-Strike Go using this card. Uh, I've never seen this game run at such a low slideshow beforehand, uh, especially once it got into the smoke. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and pop out this uh, piece of garbage K600 and put some real graphic cards in there that can actually play games. Now though, I would like to say that the K600 gave us a valiant effort. That would be a, a flat out lie. It was uh, running at 100% the whole time and practically gave us little to no playable experience in anything except for Dishonored. Uh, I'm surprised though, I thought that Counter-Strike Global Offensive would be the one game that would actually run well on it, but um, that didn't happen. So let's just pop this uh, piece of garbage out of here. Goodbye with this piece of trash. I'm just gonna throw this in the bin somewhere and never see it again. Now. Let's go for something a bit heftier. Let's just look at it, the size comparison. The Quadro 4000 is essentially already dwarfing and eclipsing the size of this. So, I mean, obviously size ain't everything. We got smaller cards than this guy here this, these days. But what we do have over here is external power. It's gonna have to be plugged in over here. So we got a six pin connection. So let's just go ahead and get this plugged in. All right, now that we've got some power, let's turn this bad boy right on in there. 
go ahead and load up Dark Souls first. Let's see what kind of framework we get here. Running the same exact settings that the other card was running. And uh, the performance is better by 10 frames per second average that I'm seeing here. Because we're actually getting a solid 30-ish. You know, if I look down, you know, it does skip around a little bit. Hell yeah, this is again, we finally have a playable experience in Dark Souls, as we should. All right, in Skyrim now, once again over at Ultra Settings, and look at this. This is already quite an improvement over what we had beforehand. We're averaging at 33, 35 FPS, just hanging out in White Run. Not a lot of combat, just kind of running around the town, 40 FPS. Again, the card is running at 99%, so we know that it's uh, it's not getting any more out of this, really. We're, we're juicing out to the max on this. And uh, I'm realizing it's also running pretty spicy at 88 degrees Celsius. So it's probably throttling at this point. It's probably a heat problem that's going on over there. But hey, it's uh, it's nice to see that this card can actually run a game at, like Skyrim at console settings. So we're basically having Xbox 360 levels of performance over here. So I think the 360 ran at like 720p resolution actually, not 1080p for all of its games. But Hey, we have something that's a bit more playable than what we had beforehand, so I would say that's uh, it's an experience. All right, here we are over in Borderlands 2, and we're averaging, uh, well, we're getting twice the frame rate that we had beforehand, whereas uh, the K600 had 15 FPS average. We're getting 30, 29, 30-ish around there, so we, we are getting some kind of, uh, again, console playable frame rate. Uh, not when I start shooting my gun, though. Oh my goodness, does that drop down something serious? Man. This is brutal, to say the least. <laughs> All right, so still kind of an unplayable experience, even with uh, the K4000. So we just have to pack it up on this one and see what's going to happen with the next guy over there. So let's go ahead and pop over the next game. I'm just going to call it over at uh, with no combat. Basically, we're running over at 30 FPS. But once we start doing some combat, it's down to 18. So yeah, it's pretty bad. Man, oh man, what an improvement. Dishonored, running at 80 FPS. This must be like one of the most efficiently ran games. This game is running so butter smooth now. Yeah, this game is rocking. Hey, we're getting ourselves 80 FPS in this game on average. So that's a solid win that we have over here. All right, so we got ourselves the Quadro K4000 in CSGO. Let's see how this game runs. Uh, hopefully a lot better than the K600, because uh, that was pretty ugly. You know, it still doesn't feel fantastic for Counter-Strike standards. We are breaking the 60 FPS mark, though. So we're, we're talking about a playable gameplay experience I'm seeing here. But I bet the second that we hit the smoke, it's going to crawl to like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it 20. Oh god, the smoke frames, we're down to 10, oh my god, we're on sub 10, we're at 8, ugh. Alright, average frame rate, um, 50. Well, so all in all, so far the K4000 is pretty much twice as powerful as the K600 when it comes to playing any games at 1080p. So let's go ahead and pop this out, and pop in the thickest boy that we have over here, the K5000. All right, we got one more graphic card that we want to throw in there. So this beast that we see over here, we got ourselves the Quadro K5000 with a six pin connection that's on it as well. So it does require some local power. Twice the beast of the other card that we have here. I'm hoping that this one actually is going to start running games. And it's, you know, pretty hefty in terms of size as well. We're talking about something that essentially looks like a modern graphics card even though it's from the year 2012, if I recall correctly. All right, we got the K5000 in here now. Let's see how well this handles. And oh my God, that is a huge difference. Man, oh man, we are at a locked 60 frames per second. This is what I'm talking about. We finally have some playable frames per second here, baby. Yes. Now Dark Souls uh, using the DS Fix mod uh, is still locked at a 60 frames per second this, like the whole time, but we're talking like completely finally playable frame rate that's on this. Even the uh, the delay that you see there, 16 millisecond delay, again, don't notice it too much in a game like this. So we got ourselves some actual good gameplay here with a, a, a admittingly over $2,500 graphics card, which I would hope would be able to play games from the era that it's out at high frame rate. So uh, I'm really excited to see what this is going to look like when I uh, start popping it in over into a different kind of a different kind of system there but yeah this is this is feeling pretty nice already I, i'm also it's also making me feel like i want to replay dark souls again because i've played it 
oh, I don't know, like seven or eight times. So uh, yeah, let's just go right to the next game. We got we're giving ourselves a, a perfect 60 out of 60 score in Dark Souls with the K5000. All right, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, and this is what I'm talking about: 60 FPS solid, not even dipping for the slightest. Now this this is the kind of this is the kind of action I'm talking about when it comes to you know using a $2,500 graphics card. I may just make a video about just saying like yeah, playing games on a $2,500 graphics card because this is a. Uh, I don't know how it can handle modern games if it's able to handle games from 10 years ago just fine, but we see that it's basically just going at 70%. Yeah, I would say this is a great success. So a lock 60 FPS, that's another win, double over the last one. Let's just go run through the next couple of games in there just to see what we get. Man, oh man, this is awesome. Borderlands 2, it's actually running the card now at 100% at, at this point, but it's running at a solid like mid-90s FPS. It's running at like 93 without even being in combat. So let's just see what we get. We start shooting some things too. Completely playable game. Like I'm telling you, if you spent $2,500 on a graphics card, even for a workstation graphics card, it better basically play everything in existence at that point. But yeah, even in combat, it's still hovering in the mid-60s. So uh, we got ourselves a solid piece of work over here. Man oh man, even Dishonored, still running absolutely great. We're averaging 130 FPS. That, that might be locked at this point. I don't think it can get any higher than that, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it's just right at 130. It doesn't get any higher. I'm not going to see if there's any settings there to improve on that or anything, but let's get a couple of beheadings there. There we go. And awesome. Yeah, 130 FPS just locked. It's not moving from that point. So, uh,. Uh, it's a solid point that's on there. Basically, he's got one more game to try and see how this is going to work from there. All right, the final test for the K5000, which I'm sure it's going to pass with flying colors, is going to be Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Uh, the only thing I'm of real concern over here is to see how does it act once you're in the smoke. And yeah, we've, we're breaking the 100 FPS mark here. So that uh, says a lot of good when it comes to this card. And yeah, it still does. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Like, once it starts going through the smoke, it went down to 15 frames per second. All right, with that, the survey says 125 FPS. Finally, we have ourselves not only something that's above 50, but it's running like at almost 144 hertz range. So it's uh, finally something that's a completely playable experience. So I'm pr pretty happy with how this card turned out. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to slap my 3070 back on the PC. It's going to close it out from there. So as you can see from the breakdown of stats uh, here in regards to the frames per second average that I had for each of these cards, we have a clear winner with all these cards that we have, and that's going to be the Quadro uh, K5000. Now, it wasn't a contest between them. Of course, the card that cost $2,500 from the same era should probably play absolutely everything and beast everything. Now, again, I'd like to stress, these cards are not meant for gaming. They were for workload kind of things. Now, what I am a little bit curious about, though, is how does this, uh, geez, how old is it again? 13 years old card fare in the modern era of games? Because I'm kind of curious to see what it feels like to play on something like this on something like a bit newer. Let's see how Game of Overwatch works out on it. Let's see how some of the newer titles that we have, maybe some Elden Ring. I'd like to see how that's going to work out on one of these guys. But I would highly advise never seeking a card like these to play any actual games on. Avoid it. It's not worth the cost. It might be good for the novelty, but I'll probably make another video diving a little bit more into that K5000 to see what can it actually do in today's era. So until next time, this is Leo from TechLionPCs.com signing out. And please like and subscribe and leave any comments or questions down below. And I'll see you in the next one.